Welcome to East and West, your dose of uplift, encouragement, and inspiration. With Craig Demo and Chukwuenye Anwoha. East and West. Here we go. Well, God bless you and thank you so much for joining us for East and West. This is East and West number 62, praise God. We've been at this for a little while, and we are so happy to bring you this time of uplift, encouragement, and in inspiration. Praise the Lord. That's what it is. I'm joined right now by my good friend, Dr. Chukunenye Anwoha. Uh, he is on the east coast of the USA in Queens, New York, originally from Nigeria, West Africa. I'm Craig Demo, and I'm over in Portland, Oregon on the west coast. And so this is a time to bring you uplift, encouragement, inspiration. Praise the Lord. Dr. Chukes, what say you? God is faithful. You know, a few days ago, we had uh, this, uh, you know, bad uh, air condition because uh, of the fire that was burning yeah. right there. In, uh, Cali. I think in the, the fire was in Canada and uh, we mm. really, you know, um, be bombarded with the smoke over here. But uh, God is that God that knows how to clean the air. The <laughs> rain came. Praise God. We can breathe fresh air again. After two days, it's just an amazing thing. God is so faithful. Amen. Amen. Well, thank Hallelujah. God for that. Thank yeah. God. Praise you know, you know, sometimes we don't just take the time to thank God for the simple things that we have every single day. We kind of take advantage mm -hmm. or uh, you know, act like, you know, we 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 just, you know, don't even have to think about it. But you know, I think it's good. Uh I've done this at certain periods, and I'll just throw this out. This wasn't the subject today, but um, at different periods, I've just sat down with a notebook and in the morning I've written down three to five things that I'm just thankful to God for. And it can Amen. be something as simple as the clothing I'm wearing or the, the coffee I'm drinking, you know, it can be serious. Or, or if I, if I drink clean water, what a blessing, you know, about that, yes. Dr. Jukes, and, yes. uh, you know, or the sunshine about the fact that I have food to eat and a roof over my head. All of those things, we should just thank God. And and when you don't, have, you, you know, really, Jesus. when you don't think, when when you don't have something that we normally count on every single day, uh, that's taken like like you know fresh air to breathe. You know, you you can get thankful for that when it comes back. And so, uh, praise God. We just well, let's thank God for what He's given us. Amen. So praise God. Hey, listen, we're going to get back into the subject we started uh, last time. And uh, we're actually going to be talking about expressing the wisdom of God, expressing the wisdom of God. And let me, ask, let me ask the question again. In how many ways can you express the wisdom of God? In how many ways can you express the wisdom of God? I just want to submit to everybody today that God has given us nine different ways to express his wisdom. And those methods are outlined in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's what we call the gifts of the spirit. And whenever a, a gift of the spirit is manifest by the Holy Ghost, praise God, you know something, the wisdom of God is being expressed on the earth. So we're going to talk more about that today. And so before we get any further into this, Dr. Chooks, why don't you pray for us? Father, we give you all the glory and honor for you are a mighty God. You are God all by yourself. You are the general of generals, the commander of commanders. Thank Where you, you walk, no man can let it for your works are perfect. Father, we pray right now. That everyone, oh God, under the sound of our voices, be filled with your spirit and power. Receive yes. abundance of your blessings. Let miracles burst right now mm -hmm. as we minister, oh God, life to your people. Encourage them, oh God. Father, let them be inspired. Let them, oh God, Heavenly Father, King of glory, be lifted up, oh God. Father, King of glory, and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. Move in your power, your glory now. Unless somebody record a testimony in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just sensing the presence of the Holy Ghost all over me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We don't have to feel his presence, but it's nice when we do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, as we look at the wisdom of God today, uh, we need to separate out his wisdom from the wisdom of the world. And I think that you you delineated that in the last episode so beautifully, Dr. Chooks. The wisdom of the, of the world and the wisdom of God. They're two separate things. And the world and the people of God have different uh, ways to determine what is what and how much wisdom really is being manifest. Yeah. And so that's really important. But I want to take a look at this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting with verse 18. And we're going to read 1 Corinthians 1, 18 to the rest of the chapter, uh, verse 31. And I'm going to try to do this real quick, but I want you to pay attention to these words because they're very important to the subject that we are talking about, expressing the wisdom of God. Before I read that, let me just remind you that you can go back and listen to past episodes. And if you did not catch part one in this series on expressing the wisdom of God, go back and listen to last week's broadcast, which you can find on any of the platforms uh, virtually that uh, we are broadcasting on. And there's quite a few of them, praise God. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says this, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For Amen. it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. The word prudent means intelligent, wise, understanding, learned, uh, or sagacious is the word. You know, we don't use that word a lot uh, here in America, but sagacious, it's you're talking about somebody that is is real wise, real sage, you know, that we can look up to for learning, you know, and, uh, you know, like a like an old professor, you know, somebody that has a lot of information. But praise God, let's let's go on. And by the way, it says that God is destroying the wisdom of these people and he's doing it with foolishness at least that which is foolishness to the world. Verse 20, where is the wise? Where's the scribe? Where's the disputer of this world? Mm -hmm. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? That's a rhetorical question. The answer is yes. Verse 21, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom didn't know God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Praise God. Yep. Not the foolishness of preachers, <laughs> but the foolishness of preaching. Preach. Praise God. You ever feel Amen. like you're, you're just spewing Ooh. out foolishness sometimes mm -hmm. when you're preaching, Dr. Chukes? <laughs> yeah. Praise. Hey, that's what God uses. Amen. Amen. And then verse 22, for the Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling plot block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them, which are called both Jews and Greeks or Gentiles, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. So this foolishness of preaching is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Amen. Because, verse 25, the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. <laughs> Thank God. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Praise the Lord. And base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yes. And the things which are not to bring to not things that are, in other words, things that, are, that do not exist to bring to into existence, things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. That's the purpose for it. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glories, let him glory in the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Jesus. Yeah, you know, in that passage, we heard certain words, foolish, 
weak, base, and even non-existent or invisible. Have you, have you ever felt invisible? You know, like you don't even count. Hallelujah. Well, listen, I have a word of encouragement for you today. And that is this. You might feel you, like you have nothing, no resources, no insight, no education, no background, no experience, no connections. Well, if that's true, you're just the person God's looking for. <laughs> you might feel like you have nothing to offer, but that's because you're right where God can use you. Hallelujah. And that way he gets the glory, glory for it. God, God isn't looking for talent ability, intellect, or pedigree. Now, if you got that, you know, sure, it's a bonus, but that's not what God's looking for. God is looking for availability and being yielded to him. Amen. Now, let's go back to talking about the gifts of the Spirit enumerated in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. And let me try to express something I've, I've never said before. You know, it just occurred to me while I was praying over this broadcast, you know, I've long held that with the fruit of the spirit that's mentioned in Galatians chapter five, you know, it's basically, it's not nine fruit. It's one fruit with nine expressions. It's kind of like this, an orange, you know, you take the peel off, it's one fruit, but say there's nine sections to that orange. Okay. So the fruit of the spirit is love. And from love comes joy, Amen. from joy comes peace, and so on and so forth. See, it's all one fruit with nine expressions. I'm beginning to see something else. And, and wow. just, yeah. that, that, that's why the Bible said that the greatest is love. Yeah. Love is the greatest. It doesn't matter every other thing you manifest. If you don't manifest love, it means that you left the real thing and you're going chasing shadows. Love is the number one, is the basis for everything that we manifest. Oh, yes. If, yes. If the underpinnings of what you do is not love, then I don't know what you're looking for. Praise God. Go ahead. I love that. I love no, that's, that. that. That's so very true. As a matter of fact, yeah. you know, like, how, how can you manifest joy without love? Yes. You know, you can't. You might have a, a season of happiness, but you're not going to have true heartfelt joy. And yeah. how are you going to manifest peace if you don't have love and joy? See, I mean, you could go on. I mean, really stop and think about that. But here, here's something that I'm beginning to see. And I'd like to ask you to think about think about this with me, Dr. Chooks, because it really didn't occur to me till really like yesterday. Yes. Okay, so here's my I'm I'm beginning to to see that uh, that just like with the gifts of the spirit, it's very similar. In other words, God gave us one gift. Yes. One gift of the spirit. And his name is Jesus. Amen. He is the wisdom of God. And from praise, him praise come the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, and so on. You see, it's yeah, the he, same he, kind he, of... he also made it clear. He said the same spirit. Yeah. The gift of knowledge, the same spirit. Yeah. The gift of faith, the same spirit. Healing, the same spirit. The same yeah. spirit. The same... So it's, it's the same spirit. So is if it's not the same spirit, then you know where the other ones come from. So you have to manifest the gift of God by the same spirit. Yes. And that spirit is rooted in Christ. It's in the knowledge of him. The Bible says the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge yes. of him. That's Ephesians 117. If everything is in him. So you're correct, absolutely correct. It's in Christ Jesus. So that's where, hallelujah, my God, everything is centered on, and that is the gift that God gave to the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So everything is coming from this son. It's just like Jesus said, I am the, the, the tree, and you am the vine, and you are the branches. Yes. So if I abide in me, and I abide in you, if you abide in me, and abide in you, shall bear fruits, much fruits, the fruit shall remain. He said, without me, you can do nothing. And I said, with me, you can do everything. So when I remember that I'm in Jesus, I said, wow, this is my God. This is an open check that God has given to us in Christ. Amen. Because in Christ, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Yes. Amen. So I'm, I'm excited about uh, this story. Oh, yeah. You know, that that is so true. You know, think think about it. There's... 
people have written so many books on the gifts of the spirit and there's been so many messages and sermons mm -hmm. and people you know will take uh, one one week and talk about one gift and take another week yeah. to talk and all that and it makes for a great series but I will tell you this it's like all these people are pontificating about the gifts of the spirit but do you realize that we are not even given a definition in the scripture of what these gifts are you know we've come up with definitions and I'm not saying that's wrong but the point is exactly what you're saying it's all about Jesus if somebody were to ask you what gift of the spirit are you are you operating in actually you just say you could say all of them because i have jesus amen you know listen it's not about what gift do i have it's about who do i have because the and, knowledge of god yeah. the knowledge of god is the beginning of wisdom yes so wisdom does not begin until you know god yeah. So if if you if you get to send that and you are after the wisdom of this world, the knowledge of this world, so you're after all of those things, like the you know, you want to read like the world is trying to take God out, outside this world, you yeah. know, world system. That's why they come with the humanistic uh, uh ideas, they come with uh, the 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 socialism idea, they come with uh, the statism and they come with uh, materialism. All of right. these does not stand. They can't stand on their own because there is no world without God. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Listen, if you have if you have wisdom, it's because you are tapped into to Jesus. Into Jesus. Amen. Because you have a relationship with God. And if you have his wisdom, really, you've got all of it. Thank you for establishing that. Thank you for establishing that because it is important. Oh, it's it's very important. Listen, I, I want to just encourage somebody today. You might feel like you don't know exactly what to do or how to solve a problem or how to be healed of this or how to get your need met regarding that. And the reality is your need is met. Your body is healed. And the reason is, is because you already have Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, like we read in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30 has been made unto us wisdom from God, righteousness or right standing with God, uh, sanctification and redemption and redemption covers all of it. Praise God. So if you have Jesus, you have it all. And by the way, also I'll remind us that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. So if Jesus doesn't have this problem that you're facing, you don't have this problem that you're facing because you're identifying with Jesus. You don't identify with the problem. Praise God, you're not that problem. You're not one with the problem. You're one with Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you're joined with him. It's where you identify yourself. Amen. Listen, let me go ahead and read. Just I'll just uh, read verses 7 and 8 from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I want us to see this again. It says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. There's your love motive right there. Okay. Everybody's going to profit. The, mm -hmm. person, the person who's, who's uh, God is using in the gift is profiting. The people that are the recipients of that gift are profiting. Those that are, are observers are profiting because they're being encouraged and they're seeing more insight into how the things of God operate. And of course, God is glorified. The only person that doesn't benefit from these gifts, the, from the manifestation of the spirit is the devil. <laughs> Amen. And he's, he's, he's on, on the outs with God, but we're not. So it says the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Verse eight, four to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom. We talked about that last time. The word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Praise God. Now, those are a little different. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Where people divide those is in different places. Again, we're not given specific definitions in the scripture, but they're different. Praise God. In the King James, that second gift mentioned is the word of knowledge. Knowledge is gnosis, meaning knowing or knowledge or science. Okay, it's an insight into two, two things. And when it says the word 
of knowledge. Okay, those those two words in English, the word is actually in the Greek one word. And it seems to say that this is not just general knowledge or generally having knowledge about something. Rather, it's a piece of knowledge, a slice of knowledge expressed in a certain way. In other words, it's the right word spoken in the right way. That's a word of knowledge. Praise God. So the word of wisdom is what to do. Word of knowledge is what's happening or what has happened. It's information. Word of wisdom, like you pointed out last time, Dr. Chooks, it has to do with the future. Word of knowledge has to do with the present or the past. Amen. So there it is. Sometimes, I'll just say this, and then I want you to take it away. Sometimes without specific information, we just don't know what to do. See, it's like we, we don't even know totally what the problem is yet. But those words of knowledge will help us in so many different areas. Praise the Lord. Glory to Hallelujah. God. Thank Go you. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says in uh, Second Peter, I think uh, one three said, according to His divine power, has given unto us all that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. Mm. Through the knowledge of Him, if you know Him, you have access to all that pertains to life and godliness. I read Revelation chapter four verse one. You know, it blew my mind. You know, uh, um, John was banished in the island of Patmos, and there was no nobody, no friend, no food, nothing, yeah. no them, nobody. Yeah. In, in in chapter four, Revelation chapter four, verse one, the Bible said, "And heavens opened." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Praise God. But when every every other thing was shut, heaven opened. And when heaven opened, he said, and I had a voice like a trumpet calling me, he said, come, talking with me. Yeah. He said, he said, come, come here. Hi. Huh. Isn't I'm that come, something? Come here. <laughs> I said, come you know, here. You know, when, when Stephen was Amen. martyred, yes. okay, Jesus stood up to receive Amen. him. Yes. yes. But here we're talking about Heaven is, you know, the, the heavens actually, if I if I could say it this way, they were they were peeled back like a like a blanket or like a scroll. Mm -hmm. So that I mean he's he's like rolling out the red carpet for him oh, yeah. and saying, get up here. <laughs> yeah, get get up here yeah. and I will I will show you and I will show you things that will happen thereafter. Yeah. So if you want the future is here, to know the future is here. You want to see the future is here. Yeah. According to the knowledge through him, through Jesus, the knowledge of him, you have access. You have access to the wisdom of God and that wisdom, you manifest it and it, you know, it spans, you know, throughout, you know, every aspect, nook and cranny of our activities. You will see that you are out of this world when it comes to uh, wisdom and knowledge and the understanding of God. And when you do things, it's not it's not what you read in physics or chemistry or biology. It is not archaeological expressions. It's not uh, you know astrological findings. Uh, but uh, deeper than deeper than that, uh, what is divine? What is yes. heaven? From God, you know, just like people looked at Jesus and said, no, 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 no. No man can do these things except God be with him. So, my God, you're going to be manifesting such wisdom how do you do it? in your office, in your business, in the government, yes. in, you know, in your family. You're going to be manifesting such wisdom of God that people will say, this is not ordinary. This is from heaven. And Praise God. Tell you your life will never be the same again when you hallelujah connect yourself with the knowledge of Jesus, knowing Jesus on a personal basis, developing a relationship with him and receiving the wisdom and the this gift that comes from his spirit. You'll just be manifesting it. It's one spirit, but you have various ways to express them. Praise God. And uh, your life will have so much meaning and so much impact. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. I just speak over everybody under the sound of our voices right now in Jesus name. And I say, receive word of wisdom, receive word of knowledge, receive divine insight in Jesus name, receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling and what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance and the saints for whatever you're facing right now, receive what you need from God in Jesus mighty name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Chooks, we have less than a minute left, but you know, I really would like to hear more about what's going on over in Umaya, Nigeria, West Africa with the feeding pro- program. And by the way, I know you got a lot more going on over there as well, but uh, just just tell us uh, the good things God's doing. Praise God. Um, Listen, that program is going well. The feeding program is going very, very well. People are getting excited by day of what God is doing. And the children get excited to go to church on a Sunday morning. Like they wake up, they're looking forward to that. It's an amazing thing that God is doing. You know, my, not just that they come to church and they get spiritual food after service immediately they'll be served with sumptuous meal for lunch and uh, there's free transportation to take them home to as well so it's just an amazing what god is doing the lord laid it in in our hearts to do it for one year and the Greg, you said you know what give me the plan for two years and five years and i believe that praise god god is going to is going to be the signature of god in that particular church and i pray that it spreads to all the churches and all of our yes all of that church is that people will come to the house of God and they will find meat, you know, they'll find yes. meat of God and it's a place where there's no lack. And I want to thank everyone that is preaching in glory to God, seeing that uh, we don't run out of funds, you know, pushing yeah. this uh, yeah. forward. I just want to say thank you. And those of you that have not done anything, please, I plead with you. God is moving. This Amen. is, this don't, is a person. Yeah, a, don't miss the opportunity. <laughs> Amen. amen. Praise God. Yeah, amen. You want to be a part of it. Praise God. The information's on your screen right now. And uh, I just want to echo what Dr. Chooks just said. Thank you so much to everybody who's contributed, been a part, and uh, want, want to encourage everyone to do what you can, whether it's $10 or $1,000. Uh, just just help out, and you're going to be blessing somebody. And okay, by don't, the way, don't want to, you don't want to mention a million dollars? Yeah. Million oh, well, dollars. yes. Amen. You, you can do that, too. Uh, you know, listen, uh, Africa is going to be saved. Amen. <laughs> so praise, praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, listen, we uh, we need to check out for this time. Thanks so much for joining us once again. And uh, I'll just say to you that if you're born again, you're God's ambassador. You're his representative on the earth. And uh, God is glorified. The devil is terrified. Yes, he is. <laughs> Glory to God. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us next time for East and West. You can find our hosts at ambassadorministries.org and godscoverchurch.com. Until next time, may God bless you from the East and from the West.